All right, Salim Rezaia here, and I want to try and answer a simple question here on this talk. Is apneic oxygenation in the ED really required? Now, there's been a lot of mixed literature on this, and it's kind of hard and confusing to keep it straight. But the reality is, is there's only one randomized clinical trial in the emergency department setting, not the ICU, that tried to answer this question. It was the ENDAL trial. It was 200 patients that got randomized to apneic oxygenation versus no apneic oxygenation, and their primary outcome was mean lowest SpO2, and they found no difference, whether you got apneic oxygenation or you didn't get apneic oxygenation. So many people said, well, it, we probably don't need to be doing this. You have to look at the numbers and you have to look at the details of the study. So two big caveats to me. Um, that are important and why I think we should still be doing apneic oxygenation in the emergency department. So the first thing is, is that if you look at the average pre-oxygenation time in this study, it was 13 minutes. Now, oftentimes, I don't have 13 minutes to pre-oxygenate my patients, but certainly in the optimal patient setting, that's what I would love to do. What about patients that come in and require crash intubation? I'm not going to get 13 minutes of pre-oxygenation. And we've all seen these patients. They're hypoxemic, they're hypercarbic, they're altered, they're not protecting their airway. There's lots of reasons why this would happen. And we just don't see that based on this study. These patients were stable enough, they were able to get 13 minutes of pre-oxygenation. I will say, however, that good pre-oxygenation makes apneic oxygenation superfluous. If we look at the time to intubation, 90% of people were intubated within 100 seconds, 80% by 80 seconds, and 70% by 60 seconds. In other words, most of these people were intubated within one to two minutes. What are the chances that somebody's going to drop their SpO2 in that sort of time frame? What this study doesn't tell me is patients with long apnea times. And we have all these scores to try and help us predict who's going to be a tough intubation. But we've all had that intubation where you get in there and there's something funky with the anatomy or they're more anterior than you thought or they start vomiting and these things, no score is going to predict that. And so I'd rather be proactive than reactive in terms of managing this. So the question then becomes apneic oxygenation in the emergency department. For me, the answer is really simple. There's no cost. There's no cognitive load and there's no harm to date as far as I'm aware of. Just do it. Put it on, use it as a security blanket, and in case a simple airway turns into a difficult airway, you have that safety net of oxygenation, that nitrogen washout, and that increased oxygen reservoir. Let me know your thoughts and comments. Thanks for tuning in.